Welcome to a lesson on the triangle angle bisector theorem. The goal of this video is to state and prove this theorem. The triangle angle bisector theorem states that if a ray bisects an angle of a triangle, as we see here in purple, meaning this angle here is congruent to this angle here, then it divides the opposite side into segments that are proportional to the lengths of the other two sides of the triangle. So the ratio of the length to BD to the length of DC will equal the ratio of the length of AB to the length of AC. Now before we prove this, let's talk about a strategy. The key to making this proof work is by constructing a parallel line, as we see here in line BE, that is parallel to the angle bisector AD. And if we do this, we can gather some important information in order to prove the triangle angle bisector theorem. The first thing that we know is true from the previous theorem, the triangle proportionality theorem. If line AD is parallel to line EB, which would be a side to this large triangle here, then we know that the ratio of CD to DB is equal to the ratio of CA to AE. Then if line AD is parallel to line BE, we know angle one would be congruent to angle three by alternate interior angles. And we also know that angle two would be congruent to angle four because there are corresponding angles. So using all that information, we can perform some substitutions and then prove the triangle angle bisector theorem. Let's go ahead and write this up. So we're given triangle ABC, where ray AD bisects angle BAC. And we want to prove that the ratio of DC to DB is equal to the ratio of AC to AB. So of course we'll start by stating the given, triangle ABC where ray AD bisects angle BAC. Now let's go ahead and label these angles so we can keep track of them. Call this angle 1, this angle 2, this angle 3, and this angle 4. So because ray AD bisects angle BAC we know angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. This is by definition of angle bisector. Next we'll go ahead and construct line BE so that it's parallel to ray AD. We know we can do this because there is one line through a point not on a line that's parallel to the given line. So line AD would be the given line and point B would be the point not on the given line. Okay, so from here, since we know that AD so from here, we know that line BE is parallel to ray AD. We know that angle 2 is congruent to angle 4 because there are corresponding angles. So this would be by the corresponding angles postulate. And we also know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3. This is because alternate interior angles of parallel lines are congruent. So alternate interior angles. Now we want to show that this triangle here is an isosceles triangle. So we want to show that angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. And now we can do that because notice that angle 2 is congruent to angle 4 and angle 1 is congruent to angle 3 but angle 1 and angle 2 are also congruent. So by substitution, we can say that angle 4 is congruent to angle 3. And again, that was by substitution. So it follows that triangle ABE is an isosceles triangle. And the reason for this is that the base angles are congruent. Therefore, we know that segment AE is congruent to segment AB. This is by definition of an isosceles triangle. 
And if they're congruent, their lengths are equal. So the length of AE is equal to the length of AB. And we know this because congruent segments are equal in length. Okay, so we're almost there. Now we need to tie it all together. Remember from the triangle proportionality theorem, since this red ray is parallel to this red side of this large triangle, we know the length of DC to the length of DB is equal to the length of AC to the length of AE. Again, this is from the triangle proportionality theorem that we just discussed. And now we've finally arrived at our proof. We're trying to prove that DC to DB is equal to AC to AB. We have everything we need except we have AE here, but notice that AE is equal to AB. So we have our proof. The length of DC to the length of DB is equal to the ratio of the length of AC to the length of AB by substitution. I hope you found this proof helpful and I hope you could read it because I know it was a little bit small, but I did want to fit it all on one screen. Thank you for watching.